All right, welcome to the channel, and today we'll be talking about the Topping A70 Pro. And this is a amp that was sent out by Appos Audio. They aren't asking me to say or do anything other than my honest opinion regarding this amplifier, and it will be going out to or back to them as soon as this uh, video is done. But uh, let's dive right into the Topping A70 Pro and my thoughts and opinion regarding it. First off, right off the bat, I'm actually not a big fan of Topping. Topping has never really been uh, an amp or DAC combo uh, that I've ever really properly like dug, <laughs> if that makes sense. I've just never, it never gravitated with me. I never, I never liked the the overall sound signature. It was always too either neutral or bright, or it was just kind of lifeless, or it was just kind of like they, they were chasing things that I didn't really care about. Just wasn't a fan. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> So onto the lovely A70 Pro here. Uh, let's dive into the, and that's just more of a caveat, by the way, about me. Just I, I'm not a big fan. That's and that will come into play here in a bit. But all right, let's dive right into the build quality caveat aside with the <laughs> my general preference of not liking topping stuff. Uh, build quality on this is actually quite excellent. I'm, I'm impressed with it. I really like the overall build quality. I like the little accents. It's just it's a nice well put together device has aluminum with a nice paint job on it. it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet you can kind of see there all my lovely fingerprints from all these takes i've been doing and kind of holding it like this and as well as the touch screen here is uh is a bit of a fingerprint magnet but it is a touch screen so that's kind of cool I dig that the uh, overall layout and aesthetic i think is quite nice i mean anything that's going to be all blacked out like this and, and have like a little monitor or like a little screen here with you can change and I'll show that in a second, but uh, it's, it's always going to be top notch for me. So moving on to the bottom, I really like these feet. I was uh, kind of a weird thing to like, but I dig these. These are actually really dope. Really dope. Uh, they have a nice stickiness or tackiness to them, so this doesn't slide all over the desk. You don't need one of those uh, Darko uh, foot or doorstop things to keep it in place. And it's just, it, you know, I really dig that. That's a, a nice quality of life thing, and I, I'm really digging on it. The front face here is a touchscreen, so it's all, I mean, so you probably see the fingerprints. But anyways, it is nicely built besides that. Uh, and on the back, I mean, it's got every single possible input output you could ever want. And it's, you know, it, it does everything you'd ever want. <laughs> More than what I would need it for, and it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, I do dig on that. Uh, it has a lift uh, ground little toggle here, which I never, I just left it on lift. I didn't even bother. It's not something I needed to mess with, but nice little feature there. Um, you know, power, so that's kind of cool, a little power toggle. I like the functionality of it. I like that it's kind of on the edge here, so it's easier to click in, because a lot of times it'll be like in here, or like, you know, and you're like trying to fiddle with it if you're like it's on your desk or it's behind my desk is pretty cluttered so it, trying to get back there it's nicer just to be able to reach across and pop it on so that being said that's your kind of all your inputs outputs and what have you and um, it even has a little usb firmware updater you can see right there so that's not a usb in <laughs> that's a firmware update just be aware there's no dac in this just purely an amp uh, let's see, the next piece that I would talk about, um, I guess aesthetics is, I mean, I dig it. It's all black. I like the, the, the screen here. It has a lot of cool features. Similar to the RME, you can have like a little graph going or you can have a, a VU meter. It's really cool. I left it on the VU meter majority of the time I had it here listening. All right, so aesthetically speaking, it's a you know lovely little piece of kit. I like the black aluminum. Dig it. And moving on to sound and or profile like i said caveat before i'm not a big fan of topping stuff but this one i was actually surprised this one actually was really good it was a very um easy listening it didn't like the highs weren't were kind of easy to get along with there's no peaks that i noticed at least with the headphones i was using which was mostly the empyrean 2 and then i was rocking my caldera closed <laughs> which was lovely pairing with this and uh, let's see, the other one I was rocking was my Boca, and honestly, all three were great. The Imperium 2 doesn't need a whole lot, neither does the Boca for power. The A7, A70 Pro puts out about, I want to say it's 1700 milliwatts, but I 
correct me if I'm wrong, just going off the top of the head, and which is more than enough for majority of headphones that you'd ever need. Like it's just, this thing is crazy powerful for what it, the size of it and everything like that. So I also paired it mostly with my RME ADI2 DAC, which is a AKM chip. And it's an, one of the older AKM chips, I believe. Uh, it mine's the previous generation AKM. With that combo, it had a nice warmth to it. It wasn't like super rich or anything like that, but it was, I would say, neutral lean warm in the mids. And the lows were not quite as punchy as something I would prefer um, or have as much control on, but it was, good like it was really good like it was a this is a solid contender as far as i believe it's in that um like four to seven hundred dollar range price point and it's a solid contender this has a lot of inputs outputs and the sound is really good actually like it it wasn't anything that blew me away or anything like that but it was a, a solid sound like it was a, a nice neutral warmth the highs were just right they had a nice kind of smoothness to them in fact i'd almost say at some point some tracks i did feel like that needed a little more splash to be honest with you but these were controlled and mind you this is with the imperian 2 the caldera closed and the boca is what i mostly listen to uh, as far as the headphones uh, but like i said the splash i wish on some tracks it felt like it was a little bit too smoothed out but it wasn't horrible it didn't it wasn't something unless I, you were like really focused on listening for like the differences that kind of thing so i think for just your normal listening you're not going to notice it and you're going to be totally happy with this uh, the other thing was is the low end like i said i wish it had a little more uh kick to it a little more more thump a little more slap a little more control but it was good it wasn't um you, you know it wasn't bad by any way shape or form it controlled well and it wasn't something that if I'm just listening, I would notice really. It just this is just overall a very easy listening and easy to get along with amp, which to be honest, I was not expecting to like this. In fact, I was kind of putting this video off a lot because I just I'm not a big fan of topping. So, um, but that being said, it was I, I really dug on it a lot. Uh, another thing I really dug was once again going back to after the sound signature stuff is the just the fact that you can have the cool little uh, displays on here. I don't know why, but that just always appeals to me. But going into who is this for and uh, do I recommend it, that kind of thing. I think this is a great option for those looking for a solid amp in that price point of under $1,000. This one's really hard to beat. I do still prefer my niche Pietus Maximus. That's uh, one of the ones I think that this is up against. And depending on what you're looking for in price point, that could be a factor. This is only an amp. That one is, you can put a DAC module in the niche. So something to be aware of. Going back to the topping A70 Pro, I do feel like for, you know, someone with the budget, and looking for maybe a little more pro features or having that balanced uh, input output would be this is a good, good contender. Like it has, they have a lot of features on here. It does have that remote. It's a little plastic. It's classic topping remote, like a nothing burger plastic thing with kind of mushy but clicky buttons. Um, I'll roll the B roll for that. Yeah, overall, I'd say for like a, a cheap, not cheap, but for a more budget-friendly do-all amp, kind of hard to beat. I could see a lot of um, people really digging on this a lot, actually, for the, the profile. And it, it it's kind of interesting to say that with my kind of bias against topping, but there you have it. Uh, I do think this is a good contender in that price point that it's sitting in, and it looks nice. It has a lot of cool features. Dig on the display here. And yeah, uh, with that, I think uh, I'll let everyone have their morning, afternoon, and evening back and uh, go get some of your time. All right. Cheers, everybody.